Software-defined radio allows you to see much deeper into the radio spectrum than your car or stereo radio may allow. This is because the RTL-SDR can see a much wider part of the radio spectrum, even allowing you to pick up aircraft transmissions and first responder dispatch. We'll show you how to run this on any Android phone on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. We are constantly surrounded by radio signals, and many things in our society, such as garage door openers and even traffic lights, can be controlled by them. However, most people don't see those things because they're invisible. And if you're curious about what's actually going on, this $20 software-defined radio receiver can actually show you a lot of the radio spectrum. Now that's a lot more than the little bit of range that your stereo can see for commercial radio stations. This can go into the 400 megahertz range all the way up to 1.7 gigahertz and see things like maybe police transmissions, uh, dispatch, and all sorts of other juicy information. Now to use this, you usually had to plug it into a computer, but you can also just plug in an on-the-go adapter to make it compatible with an Android smartphone without needing root. You just need to plug it in, and then once you have an antenna as well, you'll be able to download an application and use your smartphone to be able to look into the radio spectrum. Once you have yours plugged in, then we can begin. Now the first thing you'll need to do is search in the Android Play Store for RTL SDR. One of the first applications that will come up is the RTL 2832U driver. Now this is important because you'll need the driver to communicate with the RTL SDR unit, so go ahead and download and install this. It shouldn't ask for any specific permission, so once you install it, you should be good to go. Now there are a number of applications that will actually let you open this, but I do not personally recommend SDR Touch because it only gives you 30 seconds of being able to look at the waveforms and the general spectrum, which is really not enough to do very much that's useful. Instead, I really like SDROID, SDR Droid? Yes. Uh, that is a great free application which tries to ask for way too many permissions. So if you care about privacy, you're definitely going to want to pay attention to the permissions in this application because it asks for a lot of them and it does not need them in order to run. So when you are using uh, SDR Droid, uh, please make sure to deny the permissions that it's asking for that it doesn't need. There's no need to give it access to your root file system. There's no need to give it access to um, your location if you're just doing a quick scan. So let's take a look at what we can see on the radio. So once you download and install this application, you can tap open and it'll boot you to this little uh, menu right here. So there are two options are start radio, get desktop version, and already it's asking us for stuff that it doesn't need. We're gonna tap deny for the device's location and we'll type deny for access to our media. Now that we've told it to uh, respect our personal space, we can tap on start radio and it should ask us for permission to use the RTL SDR driver. However, I've already given it permission, so it didn't ask that time, but that is the one permission that you should say yes to. Now, as you can see, we are on a spectrum where there's obviously something going on nearby, but we can't quite hear it. So if we tap on this, we can see very, very faintly there's something happening there, but it seems like this uh, white area that is specifying where we've selected is much too big for this radio signal. Now the first thing to learn is you can set the receiver in different modes by tapping here and seeing that we can do AM, narrowband FM, wideband FM, and a variety of other different communication protocols as well. And we can also even just turn demodulation off and listen to the raw sound, which is weird sounding. Um, instead, what we should do is tap on narrowband FM. And by zeroing in, we can zoom in a little bit, tap on the individual signal, and this is a good example of an analog waveform. So this is analog uh, audio information that is being played over the radio. In this case, uh, this is NOAA giving us information about the tides and the weather and that sort of thing. Now this has characteristics of human speech because we can see uh, it's rising and falling, uh, and we can also tell that this is different from a digital transmission because we wouldn't be able to tell the difference between uh, maybe someone taking a breath and uh, someone talking in a digital waveform. So let's take a look at a digital waveform and also go to a slightly higher uh, frequency and maybe take a look at something that would be well outside the range of your standard radio. 
So we're gonna tap on this button here and input a frequency of 484.2 megahertz. Press next and then set. So in this range, we can see a whole bunch of digital waterfalls. And I'm gonna zoom in on one so you can see what it looks like. Now, this sounds horrible when I tap on it. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. So this sounds horrible when I tap on it, but what's actually happening here is that a whole bunch of digital information is being sent within this channel space that this transmission has established. Now, this could be a radio, it could be any sort of automated uh, logistics system. There's a whole lot of stuff it could be, but the difference between this and a digital transmission is that it very obviously takes up the entire channel and you can't see the rise and fall of voices or music or something else that would indicate that it's an analog signal. Now that we have the hang of spotting different types of frequencies, let's go to a different part of the spectrum and see if we can find some interesting transmissions there. Let's go to 471.322 megahertz. Set. And now we can see we're in a range with some sporadic transmissions that have the characteristics of analog audio. Now this looks like a digital waveform or some sort of other automated transmission. And generally, we're in the range of first responders and other types of radio transmissions that are used for coordinating response and otherwise may have a pretty high chance of being analog. Now it's kind of surprising that um, first responders would be using analog transmissions in this day and age because digital ones typically are not encrypted, they're simply encoded, but this still makes it a little bit more difficult for us to listen in. Instead, a lot of places still do use, uh, oh, let's see if we can hear that, uh, analog transmissions, and if we're lucky, we might be able to hear police dispatch or somebody else communicating with the fleet. Let's try 483.35. Now in this area, we can see there's also on and off transmissions, some of which have the characteristics of human speech. Another characteristic we're looking for is about the length of a transmission, um, the length of a transmission being about that you would expect for a conversation back and forth on the radio. Now this guard band on either side is also a good indication that we're dealing with an analog transmission that's made from a walkie-talkie or something else that's set to a specific channel. Here we managed to intercept someone's walkie-talkie and we can see there's other sporadic transmissions going on in the 483.363 megahertz range. Now these could be ham radio people that are just transmitting, talking to each other or bouncing off a receiver. But in this case, it sounds like an agency, probably a police agency, reporting information about a traffic stop. Yep. And I can confirm that that is some sort of police agency reporting information about a traffic stop or some other incident. So it's pretty surprising that you can see this information, but you might actually find uh, transmissions that have the characteristic of human speech, but you aren't able to listen to. This is because they might be using a digital, uh, a digital walkie-talkie, which will encode the information, but still allow you to listen to it with some demodulation. I haven't experimented with this in this application, but I do know it's possible because I've done it on a desktop computer. So if you're interested, this is something you could look into and let us know in the comments if it's available. Another application you can use takes the radio data and interprets it in a different way that is also useful depending on your application. Instead of listening in directly to the radio signals, we can start to interpret them and learn some things about airplanes nearby. Now this is pretty cool, and I'll in brief show you how it works by opening X-Radio ADSB receiver in order to take some of the signals that are coming in and try to interpret them as airplanes that are in the general area. So I'm gonna start the uh, 1090 megahertz receiver, and let's see if we can find some airplanes in our general area. And there you go. We got the call sign and other targeting information about uh, planes nearby, their flight information, uh, such as their flight plan telling us which direction they're heading in. And if we zoom out, we can begin to see even more information that we are actually interpreting on our radio receiver, telling us the location of nearby planes, helicopters, and other uh, types of vehicles that are aloft, drones if they were up there, 
will have an ABSD receiver that allows us to see their location. Now this is super cool, and if you're in an area with a lot of air traffic, this can give super accurate information about the various vehicles that are up in the air at any given time. A software-defined radio and a smartphone can teach a hacker a lot about the radio environment in an area. This can be things like listening in on a guard's radio calls to understand the way the security works, listening in on maids who are doing things in a hotel, or even listening in on radio communications between automated devices like maybe a clicker to open a garage door. Now this is all fascinating and it's easy to get started, so if you're curious about this sort of thing, feel free to pick up an SDR and check out our next video in which we use a Raspberry Pi to create a radio signal which can temporarily overwhelm a radio receiver like this. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and if you have any thoughts or questions on Twitter, go ahead and send me a message. We'll see you next time.